Hi everybody, it's Mike. I'm a, a new Rapid Composer guy, so I know nothing about Rapid Composer yet, but I do know a bit about live. And I saw that folks uh, were having a little trouble getting live and Rapid Composer talking together. So since that was sort of my first step as well, I thought I would just do a quick demo on how I did it. This is by no means the only way to do it. This is just the way I do it. Um, but I'll show you a bunch of different ways to route this stuff so that maybe you can uh, find a way that works for you. Um, I, I think I'll start with Live's preferences. Let me should bring those in here. Because I want to show it. Well, uh, maybe not. Let me, let me give you the overview first. So um, the way I do this is... Rapid Control is sending tracks on MIDI. So pick your instrument. General MIDI it works fine for me. Don't send patch changes. Those are going to be done over here. Um, I'm going to use the virtual MIDI output. But another way to do it is over IAC. I'm not going to cover that either. Uh, but that's the way I will do it in the future, but I don't want to get you down that rabbit hole. Um, and I'm also going to use ISC, IAC uh, ports to get uh, communication going between the transport controls on live and uh, rapid. So if you want to do that, uh, go learn about IAC. Uh, here's what's cooking. So on the Input side, uh, live is listening to IAC, but I'm not sending it anything. It's listening to a lot of things, you, you know. But it's also listening to Rapid Composer's virtual uh, MIDI output for notes. That's what that's about. And on the other side of things, the IAC driver is sending... This is the output side of live, so this is where output sends things. It's using the IAC driver to send sync and remotes, which are the, the start-stop buttons. And so to show you what I mean, um, I can start and stop uh, Rapid Composer by hitting that button, hopefully. Let's just see what's cooking here. And we got it back. There it goes. And I can stop it. And I can move it around in the tune. Just just like any, you know, anything else. Uh, and that's by using the IAC bus to get sync and remote back to RC. So RC uh, produces MIDI on three channels. Uh, let's look at that a little bit. So this first track, it's on channel one. You can't just, I, I don't know what auto assign does. It might be that it auto assigns correctly. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, so you could probably leave the assignments up to rapid because uh, it looks like it's uh, auto assignments would work fine. I, I just always assign stuff like that because I'm, easy to confuse. Um, but the MIDI setup on all three tracks is the same. Oh, by the way, for getting that uh, control stuff, you have to go up here in settings in MIDI and Rapid wants to know what it should listen on for MIDI and you want to listen in this case to the uh, IEC driver that's coming from live and sending start stop and position so that's how that I forgot about that so that's kind of the preferences stuff I don't think there's anything else that needs to happen here are three little tracks let's mute and just solo one of these tracks so we send them one at a time for now so it's a little piano track and you can see that it's coming in on uh, 
channel one. And this is the live indicator. It's also coming in on all channels. Uh, for this particular approach, uh, you want to do it channel by channel. Because this is one of the places that live can split multi-channel uh, MIDI. So have it listen on the channels that are assigned to the respective uh, tracks in Rapid. Uh, nothing's coming through because I've muted it, but I'll unmute this. And, uh, now you can see that channel two is seeing, in fact, all three channels are seeing MIDI, but the one that you want for this particular channel in live is uh, picked up here. So that's the first half, is getting the MIDI out of Rapid in a controllable way into Live. That's the way you do it. And in an all MIDI track, the way MIDI goes out is through this part of the routing. And what I'm doing in this particular setup is I have my VST tracks sitting over here. This is a dummy track in the middle, just to remind me of what's going on. So this side is, oops, sorry, this side is rapid control, or, uh, composer, this side is the VSTs. So this one is playing a piano, and it's not, one place that you can pick MIDI is um, directly in a VST channel like this. I'll do that in a minute, because that's another way to do this. Uh, that worked, um, I think. I haven't tried it, but we'll try it. See, This one's not listening to MIDI because it's being sent MIDI. So since the MIDI's being pushed from over here, it already knows it's, it, it's MIDI input and doesn't have to be told again. And in fact, if you do tell it, you might confuse things a bit. Audio to master, normal deal. Here's the... the VST, it's just uh, in this particular case contact running inside of complete control. This is the new version of complete control that came out this morning, so this little gizmo is not familiar to you. Um, not going to go into that, but in a month or two, this will all be familiar. And here are the three. I've I'm, I've just copied this VST across all four of these because they're all the same and I, I was too lazy to build individual ones but one way to do this is just to put a single instrument this is a multi in contact speak because I wanted a multi channel instrument to show you how this routing works and the way you do this is in the instrument within the multi channel instrument in this play in this case contact you pick which port it's listening on. If you don't, if you do Omni, it's going to listen on everything that's sent to it. Um, and since this is the piano, it's fine. But if we made the uh, electric piano listen also on Omni, it's going to also play. And if we had the organ listen on Omni, it too would play. And you can see that that's confusing. This is a way to debug stuff, though. If you see all three of them getting MIDI, that means you've probably got to go take a look at this and assign them individual channels. And this is the way you do it in contact. Just put this back to the way I had it. And the organ's pretty loud, so it, it's going to dominate. Now it's gone. Okay. So um, that's one path all the way through. The other two are exactly the same. They just point at the, you can see here, they point to the next tracks. 
and the next channels in the tracks. So this is sort of the matrix way to do this stuff. And the reason I do it this way is because I usually use very large orchestral presets and it's an easier way for me to keep track of stuff. And I stack them because uh, with sampled instruments like these in contact, the more you can stack inside a single multi, the lower the, the uh, memory footprint is. So that's kind of that. Um, and if we unsolo now, we'll see th the three tracks playing their little parts, marching across. This is another good debugging device, is to have things separated a little bit like that so that you can watch and make sure that the audio and the MIDI are, are correct. But there's other ways to do this. This is sort of the most spread apart, so let's... Um, Let's do it another way. Um, the first way we'll do it is uh, let's forget about these and let's route everything to this one, which is exactly the same multi. It's got the three instruments in it, each listening on a channel, like that. But now they're all uh, going to get their MIDI. This one's going to get its MIDI from these at the same time. So how does that work? Well, you go over here, and you route it to the stacked one, like this. And now, um, the good news is that none of these will get any MIDI, but the bad news is that this is now going to get MIDI in a weird way, because it's sending to the wrong... In, in this um, view, you still need to tell it which track to send on, because otherwise the uh, multi-instrument is still going to get confused over here. So I'll take a flyer and hope that this just works. It does. And if we look at the... You know, it's marching down the instruments just like before. And the one difference is that these I had panned so that the piano, electric piano and organ were in different places in the soundscape. And here they're all together, but in most multi-instruments you can do the panning in the instrument. And so that's the way you would do that. <coughs> and that's pretty close to the same deal. Now, let's say you don't want to do all this business over here. Uh, you just want to come in from Rapid and uh, go to a, a VST. So instead of doing all this business where you're taking it through MIDI-only channels and then bringing it in to respective VST channels, I'm going to take a complete flyer and see if this works. Should be able to bring it in on straight from Rapid. And uh, you can just sort of see what happens. This could fail spectacularly, but who knows? So if I launch it. Huh, how about that? Works fine. So, that's another way to do it. You could get rid of all this stuff over here. Bring Rapid in to a multi-channel aware instrument. And, uh, you know, you do the panning inside. That's, that's the reason I did that. And none of this business over here would change. So, again, this is sending... Um, channel 1, this is sending on channel 2, this is sending on channel 3, and uh, by listening on all channels, it's passing all channels through this part into the VST, and in this case the VST 
is sorting the channels out. Now, if you left the VST, this is where another good way to demo how the Omni mode is going to probably gum things up a little bit. Because now all three instruments are probably going to listen on all three channels. And, you know, that's nasty. So that's why you, you still need to pay attention to MIDI routing over here, but, um, you know, you've already seen how to do that. So that's a little tour of how to do a few different versions of uh, MIDI from Rapid into Live. Hope you uh, found it useful.